the Georgia Southern Eagles and Clay Helton's bunch. That's a, it is officially Clay Helton's bunch. We're not talking Trojans here. We are talking the Eagles went 3-9 and nine last year. Now, Clay Helton, of course, was not here last year. He was in between jobs. He got fired early at USC, took this job early, and has kind of started things. And he started the ball rolling pretty quickly by picking up that four-star running back uh, recruit. Like, that's definitely, definitely good. And that's Terrence Gibbs, by the way. Uh, looking at these numbers, they're number 35 in returning production. I don't know what that means, though, because this is a triple option team that is switching over to more of a pro style. Georgia Southern went 3-9 and nine last year. Their post-game win expectancy said that they probably should have been 4-8. and eight. But again, they fired Chad Lunsford early last season. What do, what do these numbers even mean? You were number 116 in PPA margin, number 109 in net points per drive, number 116 in offensive predicted points added per drive. You were number 101 in defensive predicted points added per drive. None of this makes any sense. Number 116 in turnover margin, number 49 in penalties per game. I, but I don't know what any of that means heading into this season. Looking at the offense, the new offensive coordinator, Brian Ellis, was the co-OC at Western Kentucky last year. He and uh, uh, Zach, I forget the guy's name off my, off my head, Zach Kitley, I believe it is, who went to Texas Tech, they were the guys that were running Western uh, Kentucky's offense last year. And, of course, they were throwing the ball all over the place with Bailey Zapp. Are they going to be able to do the same thing here? You know, I think that when you swap from the triple, obviously transfers can speed up that process. They bring in quarterback Kyle Ventrese from Buffalo, who was pretty good, pretty good pro-style quarterback, especially under Lance Leipold. Wasn't great under Mari Slingas last year. But uh, the wide receiver Singleton from Houston, I, I think he's going to help. He's speedy. He's good. Uh, is used to more of a pro-style. But what about the offensive line? Like, what, what are we going to do here? I, you, you got several of them back. I mean, you're number 24 in returning production on offense. But if the offensive line is used to doing things a certain way and then they have to pass block, well, that's a whole different beast. That changes the whole, the whole thing. Looking at the defense, Will Harris coached uh, defensive backs at Washington and did a pretty damn good job. Look at some of the guys he's putting in the NFL. But, uh... But he is going to be their new defensive coordinator. You got 12 guys coming back with 200 plus snaps. Uh, talent isn't bad down there. You, you look at the, the roster strength, it's not awful. Um, the front seven was pretty good against the run last year. They were number 65. That's the one shining spot. That was the one bright spot for Georgia Southern's defense. They were number 64 in success rate, number 81 in yards per rush. Like, no, it wasn't great, but it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as some of the other stuff that they, that they did. Uh, the secondary returns the most experience, but again, number 102 success rate allowed, number 118 QBR allowed. Like, are they going to be able to improve under this new DC? That's that's the question. Again, all these teams, I got a lot of questions about. Uh, there's nothing definitive about these teams. Um, the keys to the season here, I, I wrote down teams that have moved away from the option have not been very successful. And think about Bill Callahan and Nebraska. And then think about Georgia Tech right now and the difficulties that they've had from moving to the trip or from the triple into a more pro style or something where you throw the ball more often, for sure. And it takes a long time. But maybe, maybe bringing in those transfers can speed up that process. But how do you shift the fundamentals for 77% of your returning production on offense? That's the question. Defense shouldn't matter that much. But on the other side... It can get real tricky. We'll see what they end up doing. When you bring in a, a signal caller that really knows what he's doing, like Cal Van Trees, uh, he's a veteran. He's been running a pro style for a long time. I would imagine that they're okay, but again, roster strength, all the turnover, et cetera, I don't think this is going to be an easy year, especially in this division. I mean, good gracious, this division. And they're non-conference. They play at Nebraska, at UAB, and they play Ball State. Why? Why do it to yourself? I mean, those are all teams that even if you were, like, really good, even if you weren't in the middle of a transition, those would still be really difficult outs. So, why? I've got this team sitting at 3-9. and nine. Projected SP Plus record from Bill Conley is 5-7. and seven. I don't see the 5-7. and seven. I, You know, I think losing the coach, uh, and I, I'm not a I, – I don't 
believe that much in Clay Helton. I think he can be good there long term. And if you're going to let him switch it over from the triple, obviously you've got to give him a long time. you got to be dedicated to the process. I just, I don't see it. I like the D.C. hire. I don't know much about the O.C. Like, I think most of what happened at Western Kentucky was Zach Kitley, but, well, and Bailey Zapp, of course. I'm just interested. I'm very interested in what they're going to do here uh, because I don't think they're going to be good this year. I think it could take a little while before they get that roster up to snuff. I'll say that. And you know what else I'm curious about? I'm curious about Georgia Southern fans. From what I have understood about them over in Statesboro for a long time is they identified with the triple option. Their their team was a blue-collar, kick-your-ass kind of team. Like, everybody everybody knows about the Gator, right? But I, I'm i curious what the fans think about this hire. What do they think about this team, this style? Are they going to put up with this for a long time? Do they want to, do they care about getting more and more uh, competitive when it comes to championships in the Sun Belt? Or do they want to maintain that identity? And when they moved away from... Uh, from Willie Fritz, and then tried, you know, whatever the the situation was. They tried to go a little pro style. Not a lot of people happy about that. They did Chad Lunsford, let him run the triple. Everything was good until it wasn't. But they were very happy with running the triple. They they identified with that. So I'm curious. And if I'm wrong, you Georgia Southern fans, hop in here and let me know. I would like to hear from you. Jump into the comments for sure. But this is one I'm going to be keeping an eye on for quite some time. Quite some time. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.